There are several different ways that you can create a slideshow on your Mac using nothing more than the tools that come with it. The best method for you depends on what type of audience you're catering to, as well as how much time and effort you want to put into making it. There are basically two types of slideshow audiences, active and passive. With an active audience, everyone is sitting in front of a screen watching simultaneously, and no one is talking to each other while it plays. If that's the type of slideshow that you want to create, that's great, but this is not the video for you. The type of slideshow that I'm going to teach you how to create is perfect for passive audience situations, meaning that this slideshow is going to be played on a monitor in the background. This is perfect for large gatherings like weddings, fundraisers, dinner parties, reunions, business conferences, etc. My favorite way to create a slideshow, coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, and welcome to the class. The type of slideshow that I'm going to teach you how to create is referred to as a virtual photo wall. Here is a preview of what the final product will look like. As you can see here is added virtual frames around each of my images and it places them on a wall. The photos move slowly across the screen, so there is plenty of time to view each image. Before we create the slideshow, we first need to gather all of our photos together and bring them into an album using the Photos app. For this example, I'm going to be creating a photo wall of my best drone photos. So I'm going to hold down the command key on my keyboard and select a bunch of those images. In case you didn't know it, the shortcut to create a new album from what you have selected is command N. If you want to add photos to your album after creating it, just drag and drop them into that album. So here's the funny thing. That photo wall effect is technically a screensaver. There's just one little problem. You can't export a screensaver as a video file. That is, unless you do this. Let's start by closing the Photos app, and now I want you to go to the Apple icon at the top left and go into System Preferences. If you're on a desktop, I want you to click on Energy Saver Settings. Or if you're on a laptop, go into Battery and then click on Power Adapter. By the way, if you are doing this on a laptop, you should probably plug into a power source for this next step. For the time being, I want you to disable this feature which turns your display off after a period of time. At this point, let's click the Show All button here at the top to go back to System Preferences, and now I want you to go into Desktop and Screensavers. Then click on the Screensavers tab. We don't want our screen recording to be interrupted by the actual screensaver, so for the time being, let's turn off the screensaver. Then let's click on the Photo Wall effect. Let's now change the source to Photo Library, and then click into Albums and select the album that you just created. In a moment, we're going to set up your Mac to record your screen for however long you want your slideshow to run. Now, before we proceed, I want to give you an expectation about how big this file is going to be. Full screen video recordings tend to run around one gigabyte per minute, but depending on your setup, it can be more or less. I bring this up because if you are running low on disk space, you might want to save this file to something like a flash drive. At this point, let's get the screen recording ready. On your keyboard, I want you to press Command Shift 5. Now, I want you to click this button on the toolbar, which will allow you to record the entire screen. Next, let's click on Options and tell it where we want this file to be saved. In my case, I have plenty of storage space, so I'm going to save it to my desktop. At this point, we're good to go, so let's click Capture and then immediately click here where it says Preview. Now just let it play for however long you want the video to be. When you're ready to end the recording, just move your mouse, which will stop the preview, and then click the Stop button here at the top right of the screen. You'll see a preview of the file appear at the very bottom, and after a moment, it disappears off to the side. As you can see, that file is now here on my desktop, and the first thing that I want you to do is to rename this file. You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to call this Drone Slideshow. The last thing we need to do is to edit out the first few seconds of the beginning as well as the end of the video. So let's double click on the file to open it up in QuickTime. And now you can press Command T on your keyboard to go into trim mode. I'm now going to grab this bar on the left hand side and drag it to the right just a little bit until I get to the black screen. That looks good. Now I'll do the same thing at the end of the video so that I can cut out the part where I end the screen recording. Now that everything looks good, I'll click Trim to make those edits. The last thing that we need to do is to save this file, so let's go to File and click Save. 
To prevent from duplicating the file, just type in the exact same name that you gave it a moment ago. When you go to click save, you'll get this dialog box confirming that you're replacing the unedited version with the edited version, and now click replace. When you're done, don't forget to go back into system preferences and re-enable your energy saver as well as your screen saver. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to support my YouTube channel, please consider clicking the new super thanks button that allows you to leave a little tip of your choosing, even if it's as little as $2. And if you prefer using Venmo or PayPal, links to both of those you'll find in the video description. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed. <music>